Howdy, 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 partners, and welcome, welcome, welcome the fuck back to Sunset and Stardew, baby. That's right, we have been on a long hiatus here, but we are back on the farm, Blowhole Farm, actually. I am joined, as always, by Buddy Ben from Sunset and Stardew fame. What, else, what the fuck else have we done? X-Dom, what else have you done on this channel? Rocket League? Risk of Rain. Risk of Rocket Rain. Rocket League. Yeah, but how's it going, Silent buddy? Rocket League partner. How's it going? I'm doing all right, buddy. How are you? Doing good. Um, it's been a minute, a minute, yeah. a minute or two, you know, but we have uh, all of the corn in the world, apparently. Do we? I'm excited to come out there and see it. Uh, I don't know what the last episode looks like. I feel like and we peppers. were in the middle of recording an episode last time and my computer decided to malfunction. So Ooh, we never got that. that sounds about right. Yeah, we never got that episode back, unfortunately. Um, so I don't know what we were talking about last time. Hey, I got a star fruit. No, I, I don't, don't remember what those are good for. Yeah, we could do something with them. That much is for sure. Uh, we're going to be... That might be a... Yeah. It's a journal entry. Kent needs one. Oh, well, Kent can fuck off. This is my star fruit. <laughs> Tell Kent to go dig up his own goddamn star fruit. I don't think the... Uh, whatchamacallit. I don't think the community center needs one. Okay. Well, this is going to be a Growing Pains episode. It's going to be a lot of me fucking around, remembering how this game works. Right yeah, now, I'm just we're just going to get back into it. We're going to try to get back into it here. Um, have you played or watched anything good recently? Uh, got back into Minecraft. That's good. That. Did you see the yeah. Block by Block West festival they had in that game the other day? I did not. Uh, so they're doing live music now, festivals now in Minecraft, and it's fucking wild because I don't that think kind of fun. I don't think it's actually live. Like I don't think that the artists are yeah, actually like. Sure. I think they're using like pre-recorded live stuff from other live sure, stuff sure, they've sure. done. But some of the artists like record like a fun message, like, "Hey, just want to give a shout out to Minecraft for having us tonight." The funniest fucking thing though is you know that band I listened to called Knock Loose, that hardcore band. They were on yeah. they were on the bill for that. <laughs> And oh, that's wild. If you could find a video of it, it's fucking amazing because it's just people in Minecraft moshing to knock loose. That's really funny. So, yeah, that's it's worth a watch. Even if you guys aren't into the band's music, um, yeah. it's it's still worth a watch. Just seeing what it's like. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's wild because it is a live recording. You can tell it's very obviously live, but it's not yeah. like... Because the thing is, I, a lot of the record labels that I follow, like for like pop punk and hardcore stuff, a lot of them have been doing like acoustic at home shows. Okay. And so that's what I thought this block by block West festival was going to be. I thought it was going to be like a, an actual live thing. But from what I have been able to ascertain, it is actually, um, it's just a live recording from a past show that they did. Which is still oh, cool, which is still cool, but like I thought yeah. they were gonna be doing like a live performance. And I thought that's why everybody was so hyped about it. Yeah. But there were some other huh. cool bands that performed. Uh, Against the Current performed at this festival. Uh, I can't remember who else was there. A bunch of electronic artists I know performed because that's that's what I thought it was gonna be at first. And then once I saw Knocked Loose was on there, I was like, I need to watch at least what they did. Yeah, and it was That's interesting. It was it was strange to watch, but I started losing my shit as soon as I saw people moshing because yeah. I was like, "This is fucking hilarious!" Because like the way they have it, it's like inside this giant like cube, and there's like okay. a stage that they built, and they like literally change the backdrop every time a band performs. So it said like yeah. it said something. What's the name of Knock Loose's most recent album? Something blue. I can't remember, but it was like it was just that the name of their album on like the backdrop, and then they yeah. and then you heard like the voice of the lead singer. He was just like, "Open up this fucking pit," and then you just see like <laughs> Minecraft characters dropping in from the ceiling. Oh, that's great! And yeah, it's like, and he was like, "Do a circle." I love that. He was like, "Do a circle pit," and instead of doing a circle pit, they all just ran into each other, and it was it was <laughs> just really fucking funny. But there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on. Um, but yeah, there's a. Uh, I think it was Fearless Records is one of the, one of the uh, acoustic shows that I watched. They did like a three hour live stream. Okay. Uh, but it was a lot of artists I like, but doing acoustic stuff. But that was like actually live, like at the time. It wasn't like a pre recorded thing, I don't think. All right. So that was cool. But anyway, so you're playing Minecraft again, is what we're trying to. Yeah, play yeah. Minecraft again. Uh, just like trying to zone out, do something, you know. Oh yeah, I feel Keep my it mind for sure. busy with something, just like. Oh, quarantine yeah. life you know oh yeah i feel that to date where we're at yeah so it's like the perfect like have something on and the, like 
play something while something else is on. Yep, it's a game. it's a really good example of one of those for sure. Yeah, so. Well, I dropped off our quality corn. I'll show you some quality the, corn. To the uh, community center or whatever. Um, I think we still need melons, but I don't think they come in for a while. I think that's what we have up front here. So, and then we have hops, but I don't know if we got kegs yet to make anything with our hops. Hey, you want to know what's weird is playing a bunch of Animal Crossing and then coming back to this. Oh, yeah. It's really strange. I guess that's something we could talk about, too, because I know oh, that... Oh, yeah, I played a crap load of Animal Crossing for a while and then just kind of fell off of it. Yeah, uh, so Alex, shout out to Alex from Swirly Games, he is currently at the 265-hour mark of Animal Crossing. Uh, he didn't... If you guys are interested, over on his YouTube channel, like I said, it's Swirly Games on YouTube here, and he's on Twitter also. Uh, he did an island tour video that just came out yesterday. And his island is super fucking rad. And you can tell that he's put 265 hours into this game. Okay. Um, but it's it's really dope. Um, I I think I just hit, I'm like somewhere between 75 and 80, I think. it's It shows that oh, I've nice. played 75, uh, but I think I'm about to hit 80. Um, I'm getting excited about it again, like slightly, like not nearly as much as when I first started playing it. But yeah. uh, I ordered the guidebook on Amazon. I don't know if I ever told you like the whole like debacle with the guidebook um so like for most games the guidebook comes out shortly after the game releases especially for a game like that where it's really important to get that information out there like immediately yeah well we knew we were gonna have to wait like at least a couple weeks originally for the guide and we were like okay well that'll give us enough time to like get established and then we can use the guidebook as like a reference thing yeah um so the weeks went on because the game came out March 13th. The weeks went on and it got to the end of March and Alex and I realized we both had this guide pre-ordered because it's a $30 book, but Amazon had it for 15 bucks. And okay. so we were like, that's a no-brainer. You know, this is a book that we're going to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, do we need any... Okay, before I get go further, I have silver corn, I have gold hot peppers, I have gold fiddlehead fern, cheese. I don't think so. We don't need any of that stuff. No. Okay, I'm going to save the star fruit for that whiny ass that All needs right. it. But um, anyway, so oh, the, story, milk. the story with the Animal Crossing guidebook is I just got it last week. So it's, oh, it's, boy. it's well past the window of me really needing it. And the issue with the guidebook, as time goes on, they've already put two updates out for the game. So yeah. it's just been it's going to become increasingly outdated as time goes on. But yeah. the one nice thing is since we haven't experienced all the seasons yet, since in that game you experience seasons in real time, it's really helpful knowing what to look for coming ahead because I'm trying to catch everything, like all the bugs right. and the fish. And so it's nice to be able to use it as a reference. Like Krista the other night, we just took like an hour and we went through my inventory and we checked off everything that I've caught. And that was just kind of a nice... Fun, yeah, relaxing that's a fun thing, thing to, do. to do. Yeah, so that was a nice experience. I have hops, by the way. Do we need that for anything? I think we need to build kegs so we can make beer. Okay. Well, I'll keep this hops then, even though it's just one stack of it. But all right. So yeah, um, Animal Crossing has been good. I don't. I'm not nearly as in love with it. I think as most people are. I have some problems with that game, mostly around yeah. like some of the design choices. Like some of it feels really outdated, and some of the mechanics are really slow. Here's looking, yeah. here's looking at you only crafting one piece of bait at a time. Yeah, I know that's one of your big hang-ups for sure. It's it's just so fucking frustrating. Like, I mean, I it's it's really hard for me not to compare it to Stardew Valley and other games yeah. that have done it better. Um, but it's yeah, that's just a comparison I have to make. Like, it's fucking 2020. Like, let me craft more than one thing at a time. <laughs> like, if I have if I have a hundred clams in my inventory, let me craft a hundred bait. Don't make me do it one at a time. Yeah, because that me, animation is killer too. It, and, because... and yeah, like everything is so slow and drawn out in yeah. that. Like nothing about that game is everything about that game is very like arbitrary and slow. And I don't know, like I can only take it so many times. Like listening to like the dialogue when you go to the airport, like having to click through twenty yeah, menus to be able to go anywhere. Rough. And some of that stuff just it feels like unnecessary. Like I get that it's part of like the whimsy of that game. <laughs> Yeah, but it just it doesn't feel necessary. Like I feel like I could enjoy the game without those things being in it. Yeah. Um. I guess we don't know how to make kegs yet, so. Well, that's weird. And just sell all these hops, I guess. Okay. Aren't we on? I think we're on year two. I think we are. I don't honestly don't remember. It's been so long. It's been months. 
So anyway, I, I still love it. Like, I think when it comes time for Game of the Year stuff, Animal Crossing is still going to be a very strong top five contender for me, at least, sure. by the time we get to the end of the year. But it's really hard to judge right now because I am, like, about a month away now from what is probably going to be my Game of the Year, The Last of Us 2. And then the month mm. after that is Ghost of Tsushima, which is another game that I've been excited for since they announced it a few years ago. And they just put out that gameplay trailer, and now I'm even more excited to play it. Yeah, I need to watch that. It's Ugh. so fucking good. And my quandary with that game right now is there's a black and white mode, which, like, I don't know if you knew this, I really like Akira Kurosawa's, like, samurai films. Like, I like yeah. Seven Samurai, Yojimbo, Sanjuro, all those. And so, like, the idea of playing a black and white ninja game, or, like, samurai game, is, like, very appealing to me. But at the same yeah. time, that game is so graphically beautiful that I feel like playing it in black and white the first time might be, like, kind of a disservice to it. Oh, play. yeah, that, that definitely feels like, to me, like a uh, second, you know, second yeah. playthrough type of deal. So I think that that's what, that's what it's going to be for me, even though I'm very excited about that, and that's one of the new big appeals for me, but... You know Do you me, know I if love... you can, like, turn it on and off during the game? I don't know yet. I don't know. Yeah, I have yeah. no clue. I don't think they've announced that. Um, or at least if they did, I missed it. But I'm very excited about that game. You know I love, like, third-person action games. And it, oh, it yeah. looks to be right up my alley. I was really bummed out. Like, I know it's a whole different conversation. It's a whole different can of worms that I'm not going to open up. You guys know how I feel about the Dark Souls games and stuff. So when Sekiro came out, I was really bummed because I was like, this is like... This is what I want Ghost of Tsushima to be without the difficulty, without it being a Dark Souls game. Did you Souls play game. it? No, 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 not at all. Okay. I just, I, I know that I'm not going to ever play a Dark Souls-like game again because it's not my thing. So that's why I'm excited for Ghost of Tsushima because it's not going to be a Dark Souls game. It's it's yeah. like Sekiro without the insane difficulty. At least that's what it looks like to me. It looks like more of an action-y game than a challenge. So that's why I'm excited for it. Let me sell these spice berries and I'll hit the hay. Should be making mad money today. Should be, yeah. Dead has gone to bed. Bed dead. All right, so other oh, than Oh, there we go. Other than uh, Minecraft and Animal Crossing, have you been playing anything else? Uh, Animal Crossing, Minecraft, been playing uh, Halo the Master Chief on collection on PC because they just put out Halo Two for the as collection. part of the Game yeah. Pass uh, Master Chief collection on PC. Nice. So, just been doing some like one-on-one -on -one multiplayer. Yeah, with John, with I that. saw that. Yeah. With, yeah, with John. Uh, which is pretty fun, honestly. Like, it's so much more fun than I would would than just saying like one-on-one -on -one multiplayer matches like yeah yeah it sounds stupid but it's a blast it, i only watched some of it a little bit of what he shared and it looked like a lot of you guys are having a lot of fun with it yeah it was a real good time i was really surprised i like i said i'm really surprised by how fun it was yeah because like that doesn't sound like a good time but we we're just oh yeah totally that's what I would be down for at this point. Like, I think I'm far too out of, like, the Halo competitive scene to be able to dive back into that. But yeah. um, if I was going to play Halo at this point, because I have the Master Chief Collection for just Xbox, and I don't know, is yeah. it, it cross-play with the PC version? I would, I think so, but I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, because my friend Billy, so shout out to Billy, whose channel is Arsenal, but with an X at the beginning. Um, he is a really big Halo guy. Like, I think actually right now, as of the time that we're recording this, he's streaming Halo 2 on PC right now, actually. Nice. Um, but he's big into the online competitive stuff. He used to be, like, yeah. really, really high ranked, like, really good. Like, back in the original, like, Halo 3, Halo 4 days, Halo 5 yeah. days. And he's finding it hard now because he wants to be kind of a variety channel. He's, he plays a bunch of different stuff. Like, he plays uh, Valorant. He got a, steam, uh, a stream key for Valorant. Um, yeah. So he's been playing that. He plays Counter Strike, a bunch of other different stuff. FIFA. Um, so he said Halo is one of those games that, like, when you go to play it, it's you play against people who've never stopped playing it. Yeah, sure. It's, it's very hard to keep up with that. I can only imagine. Because um, when Halo Reach came out, uh, he got me excited to play it again. So I like tried to play some multiplayer of that, and I got fucking it, destroyed. I got my dick yeah. kicked in. So. That was not my bag of tea at all, so I was like, or cup of tea. Bag of tea? Not my bag of tea. Jesus Christ. But anyway, um, <laughs> I really want to play through the Halo campaigns at some point again. That's that's what I would like to do, I think. Yeah, we uh, started playing Halo 1 on Legendary and got to the second mission and got to like a mid 
level checkpoint. Yeah. But that game, you can't load in checkpoints. Oh, shit. So we like got to, we went back to it. And we're like, well, we don't want to do this again. So we just started effing around and that's really multiplayer. funny. Yeah, that's funny. I didn't get the milk from the cows. Did you get them? Uh, yesterday I did, not today. Okay, I'll go get them today. I'm gonna go crack this geode. I'm trying to think of what else I've been playing. I've been playing a bunch of really <sighs> random stuff. Yeah, I've been trying to jump around to find stuff to play. Yeah. Um, we've been playing Astroneer together. Yeah, we'll that's, that. that's been fun. We, we tried to play it on PC and I, uh, couldn't get my controller situation figured out and I didn't like playing mouse and keyboard, but luckily, uh, Astroneer is out on Game Pass for Xbox and PC and it's cross play. Yeah. So we've put, how much did I say we, I've put into that like 24 like hours, 24 hours, I think. Yeah. Which that's way more than I would have ever put into that game by myself because a while yeah. back I've had it on Steam for a while. I got it on sale very cheap on Steam a long time ago, and my hope for that game was that it was going to kind of be like a third person, like No Man's Sky, and it, it kind of seemed like it was going to fulfill like what No Man's Sky didn't fulfill for me. Yeah, and it definitely has, but only because I've been playing it with you. Like when I <laughs> played it by myself, I still didn't enjoy it. Um, yeah. But I've I've enjoyed our, the exploration more than anything. Like I'm not nearly as into the technical stuff, like building yeah. stuff and crafting stuff, like you are, which is why I fell off of it pretty hard because I'm not creative in that way and I'm I have a hard time figuring that stuff out. Um, so that's why I'm glad I'm playing it with you because not that I feel bad that like you end up doing all that shit, but I know that you just fucking love doing that stuff. So. Oh yeah, I I like doing a lot of that stuff like. The exploration is fun, but I like base building in that game a lot. That's why it's, I think uh, that like us pairing up for this game is like yeah. a perfect pairing because we both like it for different reasons. So yeah. it's it's been fun. Um, for anybody who hasn't played Astroneer, it's it's kind of a mixed bag for me. It's like I want to tell you guys to watch somebody else play it, but then it's like all the stuff that I've seen on my own without watching somebody else do it has been such a cool reveal. Yeah. Like getting to the center of a planet. Like if I had yeah, seen yeah. somebody else do that first, it wouldn't have been nearly as cool. But yeah. like seeing it by myself for the first time, like that's what I recommend is if you if you know what Astroneer is, if you have any interest in playing it, then just play it because it's on Game Pass. I would look up and if and if you like get kind of lost or you yeah. feel like nothing cool is happening, I would like look up a quick guide just to see yeah. like what should you be doing because it's very easy just to get on like the first planet and just kind of be like, well. Yep. I'm on this first planet yep. and just kind of stuck there. Yeah. But the progression in that game actually goes very quickly if you're, like, trying to progress. Yeah, because we... Like, you can get, like, spoilers, you can get off the planets. Yeah. But you can get off the first planet with very little, like like resource gathering and stuff like that you can do it pretty quickly i feel like so. it's not even a spoiler either because i think in all the promotional artwork for that game yeah. they have a spaceship in in the pick in the frame with your character so i feel like people, yeah. people probably know that you can fly around um yeah i don't know i like the system like the oxygen system i think i like it a lot better in this than i did in no man's sky for some reason yeah. i don't know why i just i like the tether system a lot like i like yeah like, i think the tether system helps a lot because like if you do the crafting to like get it yeah. Like you don't have to worry about running out of resources a whole bunch. That like, was like my main thing. To get yeah. resources to that's what took me out of meters. That's what took me out of No Man's Sky was like yeah. I felt like I could I could never venture further than what I had and if I did I was yeah. fucked. So like with this I literally can't go further than I can place tethers basically. Yeah. So it like keeps you they, in line. They did a good rework of No Man's Sky. I was actually playing that for a while before yeah. we started playing Astroneer. Yeah. And uh they they've done a lot with that game to make it easier and less like resource management heavy well that's good they've done a lot with like the inventory system to let you carry a lot more stuff yeah because that yeah. was always a huge thing like that game just became inventory management after oh, a while yeah, for sure beginning that's they've done like... a lot of cool little objective things too mm -hmm. that's um if i had any gripe about astroneer it's that when you play this type of game ultimately for a while it's going to be about resource management and yeah. it's a bummer that you can't upgrade the backpack anymore because I feel like we get limited by that every time we play it. Like we find cool shit that we have to. Oh, an astronaut. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I, I think th that's why vehicles become such a huge part of that game. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something we'll have to start 
like looking into more. Getting because we already have a medium rover now, so we just need to yeah. build. We need to build a large one. But no, Ben's correct though because our first like probably ten hours, we were just fucking around on the planet we started around on, like just mining out like as far down to the ground as we could go. And then eventually Ben was like, hey, you know we can get on a spaceship and leave here, right? And I was like, okay, well, let's do that. Because that, like, I get fucking horny for exploration of these games. Like, I want to see what is out there. Like, I don't want to stay stuck on the same planet forever. Yeah. So, like, the first ten hours we were stuck on the home planet, just, like, mining for resources, building out our base. And then when we felt comfortable leaving, like, I was legitimately nervous and scared, like, flying <laughs> my spaceship by myself to a new planet. And that was the other thing, too, is I feel like the flying in this, they hold your hand a lot, which I know yeah. some I know some people don't like that, but I do. I like that in Astroneer, it's kind of like automated yeah. flying. Like in well, no if you Man's, use, like, yeah. I think there's some, like, automated flying, like, that, yeah. the way we did it is automated, but I think you can also go manual if you want to. Oh, nice. Okay. I think. <clears throat> I haven't gotten that far in it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's where I'm at with it is because in No Man's Sky, I just kept crashing the fucking thing that I was in because <laughs> I'm just so bad at that stuff. Um, that was like, yeah, with No Man's Sky, the thing that Astroneer is fulfilling for me that No Man's Sky didn't is I, I don't feel interrupted nearly as often, like by resource stuff and all yes. that other stuff. Like, I think that's totally fair. Yeah, so that's that's where I'm that's where I'm really enjoying Astroneer in a way that I never did with No Man's Sky, but I probably only put like 10 hours into No Man's Sky total. So, and I never came back to it. I would say if you were like at all interested in it, like yeah. to go back to it, they've added a really good tutorial system to it. Yeah. Um, they've done, they've done a lot of work to make that game better. It seems like now would be the perfect time for people like me that felt burned at first or like new people. For yeah. Sure. Would, like this would be the best time to be playing it. For sure. Cause like, it was nice to just kind of chill out and play it for a while. Like, yeah, the last thing I did was just kind of get on a planet. And because it wasn't like super hazardous, um, I was just like walking to a bunch of stuff. Like yeah. I would discover a thing. Like there's like ways to like ping for stuff in that mm -hmm. game. Like you can build a thing to ping for other stuff. Yeah. It was like a thing that was like two hours away. So I was like, oh, well, it, like by walking speed, mm -hmm. like, oh, well, I'll just start walking there and just like do stuff on the way. Yeah. Yeah. And that was pretty fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's where those games often fa fail for me is like if if I get interrupted, my exploration is when I lose interest because that's all I really want to do. I want to see yeah. everything that that planet has to offer. Um, yeah, that's really, really hard to do in uh, No Man's Sky because the planets yeah. are, like, legitimately giant. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, in Astroneer, like, it would probably take it, like, on that first planet, which is probably the biggest planet we've been on. Yeah. I don't know. That's probably maybe an hour and a half if you want, if you walked in a straight line, like, all the way around it, probably. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, like, on No Man's Sky, those planets, like, can take you, like, 24 hours to go around. Which like, is fucking walking. crazy. Because they're gigantic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was like, I don't know, like in Astroneer, I feel like the tether system is so nice because even when you're like, because like even with Minecraft, like you're fucked in Minecraft if you're on survival mode for the very first time because you have to like find a way to build torches for the first time. Like there's like, there's like a sense of dread that I get, or at least I got whenever I played No Man's Sky of like, okay, I found this cool planet, but I'm going to freeze to death as soon as I step foot outside of my craft. Yeah. So yeah. like there's, there's been none of that with Astroneer so far. And I really appreciate yeah. that a lot about this it's game. It's very, Astroneer is like super low stakes and it feels yeah. really good. Yeah. It's, like, ex it's exactly what I wanted from like a space exploration yeah. game for the most part. It's more of an exploration game than a survival game. Absolutely, you know? that's you've you've articulated it in a way that I did not up until yeah. now. But yeah, like, I am less no about the survival. No Man's Sky is definitely a survival game. Yeah. yeah. With like heavy exploration joined in, but like heavy on the ex heavy on the survival too. Yeah. But yeah. I think uh, Astroneer is much more like heavy on the exploration, heavy on like the resource gathering and stuff like that and mm -hmm. crafting, but not as super heavy on the survival stuff. Like yeah, yeah. That throws you off. Um, did you see that there was another game on Game Pass? I don't know if it's on PC, but it's on console for sure. It's called Deliver Us to the Moon. Yeah. What's that I think game I all saw, about? I think there was an unfinished of that a long, long time ago. Is that more of a survival space game too? I think or is so, it? yeah. Okay, cause I, I, as far as, I mean, just based on the cover art, it looked like it, but... yeah. I, cause I, I was haven't gonna, really looked into it at all. I was going to download it, but then I was like, I got to thinking about No Man's Sky and Astroneer and yeah. stuff, and I was like, I don't even really want to waste my time with it. It's just going to be another No Man's Sky or whatever. But We'll 
Oops, accidentally sold a piece of bait. Fuck you, bat. Um, what else have I been playing? I always, like, I, I count on my sports games to get me through, like, podcasts and video watching and stuff in the way yeah. that Minecraft does it for you. Uh, so I've gotten back into MLB and FIFA in the last couple weeks. Solid. Um, those are always, like, my good go-tos for, like, hey, I need to listen to a bunch of podcasts or I need to watch this video and want to do something while I watch it. Yeah. Um, so I went through a full season on MLB as my created player won the world series with the indians and then as soon as i did that i was like well that's everything i wanted to accomplish in this game what do i do <laughs> now because that's that's kind of like what i do every year and yeah. uh so i put that down for a while picked fifa up so i feel like i go like i come and go with both those games um but yeah those are always nice every year to have um what else have i been playing obviously i've been playing animal crossing we uh been playing some Warzone. Yeah, uh, me and you our and our, our pal Randy Bortmad. So if you want some spy videos, check out Bortmad on YouTube for some of the probably arguably the best Splinter Cell Blacklist footage out there. Yeah. I'd, I'd argue because that game has a small community that he's part of still. Um, and yeah, it's it's astounding watching him play games makes you feel yeah. like I've never been good at playing games in my life. <laughs> um, but. We, we've been playing some Warzone together. I have to say, Warzone is just like Astroneer. I don't think that I would enjoy playing it by myself, but I always enjoy playing it with you guys, even though I'm extraordinarily bad at it. Yeah, I uh, I played a little bit of solos, and uh, it's the mode they have in right now for where you can buy yourself back. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. But I think I wouldn't like it nearly as much if I was just dropping in and, like, one death, I was done. That's So the thing, the thing with Warzone that's weird is... I don't think I'm ever going to look at an, at a Battle Royale game the same way that I looked at our time with PUBG. Yeah, I think it's really hard. It's really hard to not... It's it's kind of like the uh, Animal Crossing Stardew Valley problem for me. It's really hard not to make that comparison. Yeah. But I feel like it's fair since PUBG kind of reignited that you know whole, yeah. th whole thing. At least for us it did. And looking back on it, like that 150 hours that I put into PUBG, most of that time with you is probably some of the yeah. best time I've had in gaming in a very long time. And it's going to be very I... hard to recreate that again. Yeah. I've been really tempted to try to get back into it. Well, if you ever honestly. do, if you ever do, I have literally got nothing but time on my hands right now. So right. I'm down for some dumb shit. I mean, is it cross play? Oh, I don't know. Okay. I, I yeah, I don't know about I that. I don't think I'd be able to play it on PC if that's the case. Because every yeah. time I... That, that was the biggest thing that got me away from playing it is because it's so fucking unoptimized that it would it would run like shit on my computer. Yeah, it's hard to... It's definitely hard to stream. Yeah. Well, not even streaming it. Like, it got to a point I couldn't even run it hardly anymore. Oh, like, boy. The, the frame rate hitched so bad. Like, I don't Ugh. know if you remember, like, those last couple of times we tried to play, it just... It was not working out for me at all. So, yeah. I mean, we could try it. I'd be 100% down for trying it, but then I'm like, I'm kind of stuck in the same boat of like, okay, I could play this by myself like I could with Warzone, but then I might as well just play Warzone if I'm going to do solo. Yeah, like, I've been watching some uh, some streaming of, of PUBG, like some VODs of PUBG, yeah. just because I'm like running out of stuff to watch that I'm having fun with. Yeah, yeah. And so, like... Uh, Will Smith from Tested, like, yeah. from a long time ago or whatever. I've been, he streams PUBG pretty much every night. Yeah, he's really good at it. Yeah, he's so good at it. His squad is, like, monsters at it. Yep. And so it's been fun to watch some still, like, really high-level PUBG. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because they play first person. They don't play third person. Oh, yeah. And that's yeah. one of the things I feel like I feel at a disadvantage with in uh, Warzone a lot is yeah. just the, like, the field of view and just that perspective because mm -hmm. i just feel like there's such a lack of like tactical knowledge in that one well it's there it's weird because we put so much time into PUBG that hopping into any other battle royale that's not third person just feels wrong yeah like, it's i'm not used to that field of view like you said i kind of want to get back i don't know i'm trying to i want to play a round of Fortnite just to see how it feels yeah i'm i'm not into the building part of Fortnite, so that's why i've always yeah like, bounced I've, off have you played hard. it though like have oh you yeah played any of it yep i yeah? played i okay. played a lot of it actually because uh dom okay. my friend dom that was the only game that he All wanted right. to play for a while so i had people and i had i had friends to play it with like we had a full right. squad like several times when we played i just i i don't know why i just have a very strong distaste for that game i think it 100 percent has to do with the crafting or not the crafting but the building 
Right. I think it's really distracting. And if it was just a cartoony battle royale with no building involved, I'd probably be more interested in it. But the people who are so good at building now that the game has been out for fucking ever, you'll, you'll shoot at somebody and they'll just start building straight into the sky. Yeah. And then it becomes a game of like, okay, well, I don't know how to build, so I'm just kind of fucked. So yeah. it's 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 my fault for sure that I haven't adapted. Like, it's adapt or die with that game, 100%. Right. And if you're not willing to get good at building, you might as well not even play it, which is what I've chosen to do. <laughs> but um, it's not that I, I really don't – I can't say I hate the game or anything. I just really don't like it. It's just not for me because of the yeah. the building stuff. Like, if, I, if I'm going to play – I've never played it. And... Yeah. It's um, the one thing I'll it say about wild. it is that it se- it seems okay like on mobile too, which like yeah. like oh, mo- wow. mobile games now are like weird. Like PUBG was pretty good on mobile. Call of Duty was pretty good on yeah. mobile from what I played of it. But yeah, no, it, it was like a nightly thing for me at one point playing Fortnite with Dom, and I okay. had f- I had fun because I was playing with him. But then when I realized how much better the three of them were at building than me. Yeah, I was like, I'm literally just holding you guys back at this point, and I don't even like the game that much, so I'm just gonna stop <laughs> playing. So that's kind of what happened. But hey, it's you have nothing to lose; it's a free game. So yeah, I know that's where I'm at, kind of with it too. Just being like, oh man, like I could just play some Fortnite today, you know? Yeah. Which there's well, that's kind of the same thing with Warzone too. Is like, well, there's yeah. nothing to lose here. We can just download and see how we do. Yeah, yeah. Because. So... Uh, it's super free. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And no. same with Apex. I almost want to get back into Apex as well. Yeah. It's Is it cross-platform now? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Should look that up. Yeah, because I haven't played much Apex since the last time we dabbled in it that one night. And then when it first came out, I did some streams for the channel with John. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. And that was kind of like the height of my fun with that game, too. Is it seems like that's my theme with battle royales is I really enjoy playing it with my friends, but I don't have as nearly as much fun by myself. Yeah. So I just googled it. Let's see here. All right, who the fuck is Ken? Oh, it looks what does like he it's look not. like? It's not crossplay. Crossplay in development. In okay. development. Gotcha. But not confirmed date yet. Oh, Kent is the blonde-haired guy with the green jacket. Yeah, he's the army boy. Okay. I'm going to have to try to find him to give him this star fruit. But I have no idea where he lives. He lives so, like... Oh, wait, I just... I literally just bu- I literally just bumped into him. Okay. Holy fuck. It's like the bottom left-hand corner of town. There was a time where I could have told you where anybody in this place lived. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm really surprised you, that you forgot that. Yeah, I put in like so many more hours of this than I have. Oh, have I really? At least I I would assume so. I mean, I've played it on uh, I played a tiny little bit on uh, Switch. Uh, you played a bunch on PS4 though, yeah, right? Yeah, PS4 is I think PS4 is where I yeah. put my most time into it. Cause I think I'm in like year three or four on that one. Um, but yeah, what the fuck else have I been playing? Oh, I mean. I guess we could talk about it. If you're most people who watch my streams probably aren't going to watch this because it seems like it's kind of like not like those those audiences haven't been really mixing that much. Oh yeah, you've been playing a lot of predator. But I've been playing a lot of predator hunting grounds on the stream. Um, if you guys are only following these YouTube uploads, you've missed a lot because I'm doing more streaming now with the channel than I ever have. Yeah. Um, which Chris and I were talking about that the other night. There's like this inevitable disappointment coming for me knowing that I'm not going to be able to stream five days a week anymore once I have to go back to work. Yeah. And I just know that I'm going to probably lose a huge number of viewers, and it's going to be really hard to gain new ones doing that, because I'll probably only be able to stream on the weekends once that starts up again. Yeah. But, um, no, it's been really great. Um, we, we've we done some dumb stuff on the channel, and we've done some really fun, cool stuff. Like, we hit 75 followers on Twitch, so I did 75 push-ups. Heck and yeah. my fucking arms and chest are still killing yeah. me from doing that, because I haven't done any kind of working out in a while. But... Yeah, Predator's been great. Um, we were streaming every Friday there for a while, like Rocket League and whatever else we felt like doing. And then Predator came out, and somebody told me, I don't know if it was you or somebody else told me, like, hey, you should stream that. I want to see gameplay of that. And so I was like, okay, yeah. well, it couldn't hurt, because, like, at that point, I was only getting, like, a couple people a night, if that, you know, watching my streams. And then because I was, like, one of the only people apparently streaming Predator from PlayStation 4 when it came out, the channel just kind of blew up from there. And... 
like one night we had almost 90 viewers i think and i was like yeah my stream was featured on the playstation store and it was like number one on twitch on ps4 and it was a fucking crazy night um since then, as expected, I haven't reached that number again. I, I figured yeah. that was probably a one-time thing, but I have a steady following now of people that, like... And I've always said since the beginning, too, like, I'd much rather have, like, ten people who who will actually come to my streams and talk to me in the chat than a yeah. than hundred people who just watch and lurk, you know, and don't say yeah. anything. So I have that now, and it's it's really satisfying, and I'm just... I hope I don't lose any of them whenever I inevitably can't stream as much. Yeah. Um... So hopefully they're willing to stick with me through it, but I don't know how much longer this furlough is going to last. Our company was originally saying end of July, but now they're saying they want to get a plan in place to have us back in the office by the end of June. So. Oh, that's kind of exciting. Yeah, I it's if if being unemployed slash furloughed has taught me anything, it's that I really took my job for granted before. Like yeah. I, I I don't I don't like where I work that much sometimes, but it, it right. is it is a good job. There's there's aspects of it I really don't like, and there's aspects of it I do like. Um, the one thing I miss more than anything is just talking to people every day. Right. Um, like being home and not having any kind of human interaction. Like I get that the pandemic like fucked that up before the furlough thing happened for me. Like I've I worked from right. home. I worked from this job from home for a month before I right. got furloughed. And that was a nightmare because these things that they gave us, which are called eye gels, they're like little mini computer towers. And they're supposed to be as fast as like whatever your home internet is. So our download speed's like 100, like 90 to 100 on a good day. And so yeah. I thought that like I'd be one of the fortunate ones. Like, hey, maybe all these people that are having issues with theirs, I'll be fine with mine, you know. But yeah, yeah. You know, it, it was fucked from day one. So if anything, when I actually get to go back to the office on a steady connection and know that my job is safe again, I'm going to probably breathe like the hugest fucking sigh of relief. Yeah. Because I, I never thought I'd say it, but I really do like miss working. Like there was, there was a piece to knowing that your, your job is safe that I'm very desperately yeah. lacking right now. Sure. And I'm very excited to go back to that at some point. In some ways it's been nice because uh, up to the, up till now I haven't had a vacation from work since 2015. So I, yeah. I, all I really wanted was like a week off work and now I've been off work for a month. <laughs> so, but I was talking to Aaron about that the other day. Like you guys as teachers totally understand where I'm coming from with this on where I'm coming from with this, I'm sure. But like after the first month, it just kind of gets like, it like grates on you a little bit. Oh yeah, like being it, off that long. Like July is a weird month. Oh yeah, during the summer. Like, I bet you just get weird. Yeah, yeah. Because like June, you're like, okay, it's cool. We're like chilled out. Like, oh, I can finally take a break from the stress of the year. But then yeah. like July hits, and you're like, well, what am I supposed to do now? Yeah. Like, what are we even doing? Yeah. No, it's been weird. Like at first, it was like nonstop, like stress and depression and anxiety, and like being worried that I wasn't going to get paid for being off because it took them quite a while to pay me for it. Uh, yeah. And then once the checks started coming in, and I realized I'm actually making more now being unemployed, I was like, hey, this might be kind of cool. So mm -hmm. like I'd say weeks one and two were the worst. Weeks three and four have been significantly better. But now I'm, like, back into a point where I'm, like, if they could just let me know exactly when this is going to be over, that'd be great. Sure, the uncertainty <laughs> part's got to be that's, really hard. That's the worst part of it by far. Like, I, I don't think I'm ever going to fully be able to relax and enjoy this as a vacation because, truth be told, yeah. it's, it's not. It's not a vacation. Right. No. And there's – the relaxation part is, like – I'm not working right now, but then, like, the way my anxious mind works is I haven't done my job in a month, potentially for two to three months by the time I get to go back. I've already forgotten how to do some aspects of my <laughs> job because all of it, like, I have a terrible memory. Like, I'll be the first person to tell you my mind is a fucking shit show. And so a lot of what I did on a day-to-day -day basis, I, I'm finding I only remembered it because I was doing it every day. Right. Like I went to log. I haven't been on my work computer in two weeks because oh boy. I was checking my right, emails and stuff. Like, what's the point? Like, I was checking my email every day, but I realized like I can't do anything about it, so there's no point for me checking this. So I got on last last night for the first time in two weeks. I had 116 emails, and oh not, boy. and not a single one of them was anything that I could do anything with, and I ended <laughs> up deleting most of them. So. Yeah. I literally couldn't remember my fucking password to log on for work last night, so I had to reset it. And I feel like that's only going to get worse with every other aspect of my job the longer this goes on. Yeah. 
So hopefully, like I said, fingers crossed, not to be too, too much of a downer about it, but I, uh, it's, it's been eye-opening. It's probably the most humbling thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life, it's sad to say, <laughs> but it's, it's definitely put me in my place, I think, and it's going to make me appreciate going back to work a lot in a way that I wouldn't have before. Yeah. But I, I'm, like, finally seeing why, like, because whenever you guys used to talk about your summers off, I, like, back in that, like, drought of me not having a vacation for five years, I was like, man, I would kill for, like, a couple months off. <laughs> And yeah. now that I have it, it, under these circumstances at least, it's bad. Yeah, it feels weird after a while. You're yeah. just like, what am I doing? Like, you, like, there's, do you ever get, like, the guilt? Like, you feel guilty for not doing anything? Do you ever get any oh, of yeah, that? Oh, yeah, especially because, like, in our job, like, yeah. you just always should be doing something, probably. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's always, like, curriculum to, like, rewrite or, like, yeah. look at and, like, try to fix. Yeah. There's always, like, lessons you could be thinking of. Yeah. And so it's just like, uh, I should be doing stuff, but I'm not. Yeah. And like, I want to enjoy my break, but I should also be doing stuff. Like, it's a whole thing. No, that's where I'm at. Like, I literally, I couldn't work right now, even if I wanted to. But yeah. I still feel guilty because 90% of the people that I'm friends with at work are still working. Right. And so I like, there's like a part of me that's like guilty. Like, they keep texting me and asking me how I'm doing. And I'm like... Well, you know, I, I'm sure you probably don't want to hear this, but I'm not doing great. I'm sure you guys would love to be off right now, too, but this actually isn't yeah. great. So that's, like, the weird thing is, like, explaining it to them, like, because they're, like, nothing's changed for them. Like, they're yeah. they're still working business as usual. Some people, uh, some of my friends at work have had their hours cut, but very few of us, like, got 100% furloughed like I did. And so, yeah, it's it's been weird. Like, and I, I got to see uh, our friend uh, Randy that we mentioned before. I got to hang out with him and his girlfriend Hannah the other day, like a couple weekends ago. And that was yeah. nice just to, like, sit distance on a porch and just, like, chat with somebody. Yeah. Because sure. up until then, like, the longest conversation I'd have with anybody other than Krista was, like, our food delivery guy came one day. And he, like, <laughs> he, like commented on my shirt and we talked for, like, five minutes about whatever was on my shirt that day. And that was what really got me bummed out, thinking, like, man, I miss talking to people. Yeah, face-to-face, -face, yeah. yeah. So, hopefully, people start listening and stay the fuck at home so we can get through this thing, because I really want to get back. Yeah. But anyway, so Minecraft, huh? You, uh... <laughs> but anyway, no, I didn't mean to go on that tangent, but it's it's hard no, not it's to cool, talk... Dude. It's hard not to talk about that, because it's, like, the biggest thing that's been weighing on my mind lately. Oh, yeah. I think for everybody, but me especially I think right that's now. what these... That's what I like about this... This series, is we just get to talk about stuff. Yeah, for sure, man. Um... Play, we talked about Warzone, talked mm -hmm. about Battle Royales in general. Mm -hmm. What else? I played... I got back into for like a couple of days Mother Gunship again. I enjoy that's uh, yet, yet that. again. Stop me if I sound like a broken record. I enjoyed that game a lot more <laughs> with you than by myself. Yeah, I think you like struggle to understand the exact mechanics of that game. Oh and yeah, and like guiding you through it was was pretty cool because yep. that game is cool. Yeah, it just it takes some getting used to. Can, yeah, like yeah, figuring sure. out how to build a gun out of nothing essentially. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a cool mechanic, but at first I was like, okay, well, I'm holding a piece of metal with a gun on the side of it. What the fuck do I do now, you know? Yeah. But it's cool oh, once you I get just... it up and running. Gosh darn it. What happened? I just accidentally organized my bag, and oh, I no. don't... That's there's, no like, good. a very specific, like, set of tools oh, I yeah. like on each row. Yep, that's no bueno. Oh, man. Um, I've been watching some stuff. Um, yeah, I have you seen the movie Prisoners or is it just Aaron and Randy? No, I haven't seen it yet. No. Okay, you should watch it. Yeah, um, it's gonna probably stress you the fuck out, but yeah, because I don't know if any of y'all out there have seen this movie. I won't talk about it too much because part of the experience of this movie is going into it pr pretty much blind, like I did. Uh, but Dennis Villanueva is the director. He made uh, Sicario, uh, the second one he didn't make, but the first one he did, and Sicario was fucking dope. I've only seen it once, but I remember really liking it. Um, and what else did he do? He did the new Blade Runner. That's right. I really, honestly, I I could go on and on about how I like the new Blade Runner better than the old Blade Runner. But oh, yeah, I, the old I, Blade Runner is rough. It's kind of rough to watch. It's really slow. Nowadays, it's, uh, yeah, it's very which, slow. To be fair, Blade Runner 2049 is a pretty slow movie, too, but it's at least, like, very visually pleasing, and it actually pays yeah. off, I think. Um... But yeah, no, Prisoners has Jake Gyllenhaal, it has Hugh Jackman, has Terrence Howard, 
Uh, it has Maria Bello in it. Who else does it have in it? Uh, the kid from 13 Reasons Why that plays the main uh, boy character in that show. Oh, that's wild. Yeah, he's like Hugh Jackman's son in that. Huh. Um, but anyway, it's basically like it's a it's a crime movie. Which, if you guys know anything about me, I'm fucking I'm a whore for true crime. And Ooh. Yeah. It, uh, it's not true crime because it's not based off of anything, but it's very convincing. Like if you were to tell me, yeah. like, oh, this was based on something, it's like, okay, this thing probably happens like all the time. But it's like a, it's like it, a, it's like a kidnapping movie, basically. Yeah. Um, or like a, I guess a missing movie more than anything. Did but, you milk the cows this morning? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you put uh, in the cheese thing? Fuck! I forgot. <laughs> Shit! I just sold the milk. Fuck. I forgot how this All fucking right. game works. All right, my yeah, bad. There's cheese stuff and uh, mayonnaise machines in our, like, and, animal house. And I, and I walked past it two days in a row, so that's dope. <laughs> All right. It's so good. <laughs> too much Animal Crossing, like, man. Wait, what's happening? That's one thing I'll say about Animal Crossing. It's nice. I don't have to worry about feeding any fucking animals or milking any yeah. cows or anything. It's kind of yeah. nice to not have that responsibility. But going back to Animal Crossing, like, do you ever feel confused about, like, the expectations of you in that game? Like... They're like, okay, well, you're going to go on this island getaway and you're going to live this really simple island life. But, oh, I hate it. But wait a minute. We want you to build it up as like this mini utopia. Yeah. I genuinely hate that aspect of it. <laughs> yeah. Like to my very core. It's probably the reason why I've stopped playing it. Yeah. Because cause... I like, I was like, oh yeah, just this chill little island that I'm in. And then they're like, build a city. <laughs> no. If you I don't want it, to. If you build it, I don't want to put a bunch of garbage out here. I don't want to like put your fucking vending machines out. Yeah. Yeah, I want to have my cool little island that I go and just chill at. Which yeah, to be, it sucks. To, yeah, it's if that stuff wasn't tied into the progression, it would be totally fine. And if it was yeah, optional, exactly. but like it's a hundred percent tied into the progression. Like you have to develop your island in the way yes. that they want you to, not the way yeah. that you want to. And that's a really big bummer. Because in Stardew, at least, like we can put whatever the fuck we want on our farm. But, yeah. But the fact of the matter is, it's a farming game, so we're gonna have farming yeah. shit on our farming land. Right. Animal Crossing is supposed to be a chill island game, not like building a whole city on an island game. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I genuinely, I it really makes me mad. Like I am fired up about it because it just, <laughs> it just makes like, it just makes no sense. Yeah, like, no, it's, I just it's don't really like strange. It. I, I get it because all the past Animal Crossing games were about like being the mayor of a town, and if yeah, you, when you get to a certain point, like Alex has put al literally almost three hundred hours into the game at this point, and so. He's at a point where he's developed his island to be really cool. Like, his doesn't feel like a city. It just feels like a town. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, he has, like, yeah. a giant, like, barbecue area with, like, food stands. And he has, like, there's one part of his island to me that looked like a city. And it was, like, where all of his stores and stuff were. Okay. That was the only part of it that looked like that to me. But, um... I would say for I don't want to make it sound like I'm shitting on this game because like I said it is going to rank pretty high for me by the time yeah. we get to the end of the year and I really have like my time with it, but nothing to the, in that game now is going to compare to the first like 50 hours that I put into it. Like I've really slowed down with it now. Oh yeah, and my I desire to keep pushing forward. Couldn't like, care less. Yeah, it's I, I don't have quite as strong of a distaste for it as you do, but I'm I'm getting there. Like I really just want them to like let me do my thing. It's like, I'll play it if I run out of others. Like, if I'm like, oh, I just want to sit here yeah. and, like, play my Switch while something's on the big TV. Yeah, yeah. Because normally it's like, I have ga I have a game on the big TV and then a video or something up on my monitor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then, but, like, if I, like, want to watch something on the big TV and not and just play something, like, I'll play Animal Crossing. But No, no, for it's sure. It's just like, I don't care. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't care about making my house look that amazing. Like, I just, I wanted to have some cool stuff in it, and now I, I almost, like, that's the thing, too, is, like, getting literally hundreds of thousands of bells to pay Tom Nook to upgrade my house. It's, yeah. At first, it was, like, back, especially before they patched out the tarantula fucking gimmick, like, going to an yeah. island and catching, like, filling your inventory with tarantulas, like, they decreased the tarantula spawn rate on purpose now, so people can't do that anymore. Ugh. So it's like you're making people now feed into this, like, algorithm that most people don't want to do. Well, the one thing I will say about that, like, I think a lot of people don't realize, like, how much you can make off of the hot items of the day. That's true, yeah. Because I think a lot of, I, I don't know, at least from, like, our friend group, I feel like not a yeah. lot of us engage in the 
crafting unless it's yeah. something like we have to do or make. Yeah. But I will say like the hot item of the day, you can make some bank if you have all if the resources saved up. But that's that's the problem though, is that at yeah. this point now I don't feel like going out and just chopping wood just to chop right. wood or getting ore yeah. just to get ore. So nine times out of ten when there's that hot item of the day, it's for an item that I can't even craft. Right. And if you had asked me like 20, 30 hours ago in the game, I would have been like, sure. But by the time I got it, I just didn't care anymore. And like, and then like, I don't know, I lost interest once I realized like how the fishing works too. Because fishing for me is my favorite part of Stardew Valley and arguably is yeah. probably still my favorite part about Animal Crossing. But I don't like the like, like the luck aspect of it over a skill aspect. Like if I go yeah. to the ocean at seven o'clock at night in stardew i can expect that the fish i want to catch is probably there and at that right. point it's up to me to, to have the right bait and tackle to do it and my skill right. with the fishing meter with animal crossing it's like well this thing might appear it might not you might have to craft 100 bait one by one at a time and you might not get this thing right like for me like trying to catch the string fish is what really did me in which was like the hot fish that you had to catch before the end of march yeah, uh, because that was the other thing is like where they launched this game, they gave you like 15 days or 20 days, however many more days in March there were. Um, and uh, you had that amount of time to get everything up and running and then also catch everything that was going to be disappearing at the end of March. Right. And for somebody like me that's OCD about trying to catch everything, it's like, well, I don't want to wait until like December or next March to catch this. Right. Thing. So I think it literally did take me over 200 pieces of bait to catch the string fish. And That's crazy. the way I say that is like, it's not like I had, I, I struggled with catching it. I struggled with making it appear to catch it because when it appears, right. the skill is just in the sound. Like if you can get the sound down, you can catch anything. Yeah. But when it like appears randomly, I, if I see one more fucking black bass on my fishing line or one, <laughs> or, or one more, uh, what's that? Oh man. What's the other fish? The sea bass. Sea bass. Yeah. The sea bass. Oh my God. All the flounder. And then have you caught the oar fish yet? That giant, like, snake-ass yeah. looking fish? Okay. I've been trying to catch some of the more rare fish that are going to be disappearing at the end of May. Yeah. I keep seeing people online, like, that still haven't caught an oar fish yet. I shit you not, I've caught at least seven oar fish. <laughs> and I, like, at this point now... A lot. Like, yeah, they're worth, like, 7,500 bells per oar fish. At this point, I'm like, I want the oar fish to fuck off so I can actually catch something I want to catch. But yeah. I, I digress. I'm not going to bitch about Animal Crossing because I know that it'll upset people, but... I, I think there's parts of that game that are really good. There's parts of that game that are just like, man, you could have done so much better. It's And that's the frustrating just, thing, too. It's is, just because, like, there have been games that have come out that yeah. have been better. Yeah. And, like, and, and the way people who are big fans of Animal Crossing look at it is it's not fair to make that comparison because Animal Crossing is kind of its standalone thing. But, like, Animal this new Animal Crossing game borrowed stuff from other modern games anyway. Right. So if they were going to do that, why not borrow the good stuff? Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Borrow some of the quality of life stuff. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, like Nintendo has been weird forever about making games. Like, they do things their own way and they have a fuck you attitude about it. Like, they don't change for anybody. And in a way, it's honorable that they're that way. But in another way, it pisses me off because it's like, if you guys are never going to change, how can I justify playing your games forever? Yeah. 